Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop and today we're in Lori Holt's beautiful studio and we're going to talk about her beautiful farmer's wife quilt and how it led to her quilty barn along on her blog, Bee in My Bonnet. So Lori, tell me about this Hi, quilt. Kimberly. Well, this is my farmer's wife quilt and I didn't do all of the blocks in the quilt, in the book, but it took me a couple years, you know, to just do a block here and there. And then, so I had saved some backing fabric um, Annie's farm stand from mm -hmm. Lake House Fabrics. I had saved that fabric for the back to use the seed catalog print. And when I finished and got it set, I pulled out my yardage, which I thought I had enough. But because it was two years later, I realized I didn't and it wasn't available anymore. And so I decided I needed to make the backing bigger by piecing some blocks. And I decided to make some barn blocks to go on the back of the quilt because it is the farmer's wife. So I made four blocks to go on the back of the quilt so that I would have enough backing and I had so much fun making the barns. And so I thought others might have fun making them too. And what I did was decided to <clears throat> start the quilty barn along. And I just used six inch blocks to go on the side of the barn. Okay. Some of the blocks come from the you know traditional farmer's wife blocks or just any other traditional blocks. And so on your blog, you're going to have 12 barns that are exactly the same and 12 unique centers in each block. Yes, all the barns are the same for the first quilt that I'm making. All the barns are the same, and they're all red, just but they're all different prints. And I have, I'm using gray roofs and brown roofs like every other barn or something like that. I already have four barns four finished. Okay. And so uh, today we'll be working on barn number five. Yeah, let's show the first four and how you've started setting them together. This is the first four oh, barns. Cute. We love it. And this is the sashing. You just put sashing strips around each barn mm -hmm. and so it turns each one into the, the barn blocks start out to be 14 inches finished then you add one inch strips around the outside of the background which makes them 16 inches Then you add two and a half inch strips around the outside so they finish at a 20 inch block. Okay. And then you just sew them right together. Okay. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to show you how you make the barn block and how do you make one of your center square, center, center block. Yes, we'll be doing barn number five. Okay. We're going to be making the maple leaf block. The traditional maple leaf block right here. That's okay. what we're going to construct. Okay. So let's get the fabric out. Okay, so our first step in our quilty barn along today showing the block number five is we're going to make this traditional maple leaf block. So Lori, tell me what we've cut to make this block. Uh, we've just cut two and a half inch squares. Okay. So this, I've cut a square for the stem, the okay. brown, and then these are, these are the squares here, and then these four will become half square okay. triangles, and then we'll just keep a background that's here. So we need to cut four squares of the background to go with, let's see, yeah, half square one, with the half square triangles and then we need to cut two squares for the stem one to go on each side for the easy corner triangles but we're going to cut these at two and a quarter inch square instead of two and a half so by cutting them at two and a quarter inch square then and sewing one on each side we'll end up with the stem right here okay okay so let's go over to the machine and get them stitched okay so here we are at the machine and the first thing we're going to construct is the stem so we're just going to do an easy corner triangle on this square. But it's kind of larger than we normally do. But you'll see it works out perfectly for the stem. So you just line it up at the corners and you're just going to sew from corner to corner. And I have my angler on my machine. So I have a line down the center that lines up with my needle. So when I sew easy corner triangles, I just stick my needle in the end of the corner and then line up my corner down here. I ignore this outer corner. Just I'm just looking at the corner of the easy corner triangle that I'm sewing on. And I just stitch. I just stitch down there and then I'm going to trim and press this out so that I can add one to the other side so now we'll have this stem segment down here. Okay so here we are back at the machine. I have 
cut an approximate quarter inch seam allowance past my stitching and pressed towards the triangle. And now we're going to add the other one. So you just set it in the corner. Put your needle down in the corner, your foot to hold it in place. Make sure the corner of that easy corner triangle square is following the angler line. Now we'll trim and press that open, but you see that we've got a two and a half inch square again, but we've got a stem going down the center. Okay, so here we are to the machine and we've trimmed and pressed towards the triangle. And there you have your easy stem segment. Let's see, that's now back to two and a half inches square, just like all the others. So then we can go ahead and construct the half square triangles. And how we're going to do that is just right sides together We just need to do four of these and just the same way with the half square triangles. We just put a needle in the corner, put your foot down, make sure that it's lined up here. If it's lined up here on the corner and you've cut accurately, then it's automatically lined up here. So you don't have to worry about lining up all four corners. And just stitch from corner to corner and I'm just going to continue on with the remaining three. It. And I'm chain piecing these so I don't have to stop and clip my threads each time and I can save thread and save time. Right sides together, start the corner, line those up. Last one. This block is a really good way to use up leftover two and a half inch squares because it's just a scrappy maple leaf that I like to make. And I've used it a lot. Okay, now we clip our half square triangles apart. And we're gonna go over and press them. Okay, so now you have sewn your half square triangles. Show me how you're gonna cut those and iron them. Okay, I'm going to just give them a quick press and then because this one has kind of a flower in the middle I kind of want to decide which one shows so I think I'm going to trim this off and then open it up and press towards the dark and you're cutting approximately a quarter inch away from your seam yes it doesn't have to be exact because you've already sewn it but just approximately a quarter of an inch so that that segment goes there. Quick press. that way. And this one turns this way. And then we're going to go over, now we've got our nine patch, and then we're going to go over to the machine and join them together into rows. Okay? Okay, so here we are at the machine and we're going to join this nine patch into rows. But first I'll just join this to this, this to this, and this to this. So I just flip it over, right sides together. Do the next row above it. corners in the beginning. Make sure they match at the end. Okay, then 
gonna lay them right back out on the design board. Just how they need it to go, and then we'll go ahead and add the squares on the end. apart. Lay them back out. I'm going to go over to the pressing and get them pressed. So now Lori has her rows together. So Lori, show me how you're going to press these seams. Okay, well there's, when you have the rolls, there's two ways you can do it. You can do, press one this way, one this way, and one this way, or you can press them open, okay, depending on what you want to do. For this small of a block, usually I press them open, so that's probably what I'll do. Okay. So I just put the tip of my iron in the opening. I just, instead of ironing, I just press down on them and then I'll flip it over and do a quick, quick press that way and just continue with the other segments. That way, if they're open, it's a very strong seam. You don't have to worry about pressing your seams open because they're going to be in a quilt. And they'll be quilted over and sandwiched with quilt batting and the backing. Just make sure you use a stitch that's secure. And give it a quick press on the front. Okay, and then as you can see, now I just need to sew the rows together and then I'll press those seams open as well. Okay, and I have pressed the seam open so that it lays nice and flat. And you don't have to worry, like I said, about pressing your seams open. It's strong. I've pressed open for years and none of my quilts have ever come apart. So now we're just going to line this up. And add the remaining row. I like to put, when I'm using small blocks, when I'm making small blocks rather, I like to press after I add each row so that my iron doesn't smash what I've previously sewn. And there we go. So now Lori has sewn her maple leaf block and she's going to show us how we're going to set this on the side of our barn. So Okay, so I just go to a bigger design board where I have laid out the pieces for my barn. And you can find all the cutting instructions for the barn on her blog at Be In My Bonnet. Okay, and then, so the first thing I do is I'm going to add strips around here. To frame your block? To frame my block. So I'll go ahead and do that first and then that will all be okay, complete. Okay, so here I pressed the block, I've sewn the strips on the sides and pressed towards the strips. Okay, and so now we can add it back onto the design board where it's going to go, and then we're gonna start building our barn around it. And what I do with the block is I start with the smallest segment, so we're gonna start with these little roof pieces up here. Okay, so you've sewn half of your flying geese now. That's right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim them. Just like I did in the maple leaf block. Approximate quarter inch seam. Give them a press to set the seams and press towards the triangle, okay? And now another square goes on the other half. 
but you have to do one half first and press it out before you can do the other half because as you can see you sew across there sew okay. across the seam okay so now you've sewn the the square on yep, the, the other side yeah side of the flying geese so again just press trim a quarter inch approximately press And I press towards the triangle. Okay. And in order to put that on the board where they go. And what's your next step that you're going to piece? And I put them right back on the board. And then I can go ahead and piece that to that. But I usually what I do is I do all my easy corner triangles first so that I get them all in squares, strips, and rectangles. And okay. then I can sew it all together at that point. Okay. So I'm going to sew this easy corner triangle onto that section. And this one, to the, the roof one, onto okay. this side, and then this one, if I can get it on there, uh, onto that side. Okay, so let's go sew. Now we have sewn our easy corner triangles onto our rectangles. So tell me the steps you've just completed, Lori. Okay, I've just, you know, like you said, just put the easy corner triangles on there. I've trimmed and pressed towards the triangles. This is the roof section and then the little sections that go on above the roof, and then I've added them to the rectangles in the bottom, so now they're each a square. Okay. So we lay it back out on the board. Okay. And then, now show me what you're going to sew together next. So now I've got everything into squares, rectangles, and strips, mm -hmm. and I can just, like I can sew this into a row, Okay. so that it will be the same size as okay. this. I can add the sides onto the door so it will be the same size as this. Okay. I can make this whole row. Okay. I can join this to this. Okay. So it's just a process of elimination. I just do each step at a time until they get smaller and smaller. Okay. So let's go sew. So Lori, tell me what you've just sewn together. Okay, so I, I sewed the whole top row together here. I made this into a row. And so now I can start joining all of these sections. Okay. I'll join together. I'll join these two sections together, and then they'll be the same size. Okay. These two sections so that I can join them together. Okay. Let's do that. So now we have the two bottom sections of the barn done in the top. So tell me what we're going to sew together next. Well, we're going to put the two sides together okay. and then join the top, and our the barn will, will be, be done. Complete. Okay. So we've now finished the fifth block from Lori's Quilty Barn Along. Tell me how you would finish this. Well, I'm going to finish it just like I've done the other mm -hmm. ones. I put the white sashing around yeah. it and then added the printed two and a half inch strips. And that all of that is mm -hmm. on my blog. Yep, at Be of My Bonnet. And visit us online at fatquartershop.com. And have, have a, a quilty, quilty kind of day. day.